All right, so before we get started, I have an announcement. We're not super close, but we're kind of close to a million subscribers. We're about, I think, 250,000-ish, give or take, away. So we can, the, the light is at the end of the tunnel. I can kind of see it. Whenever I hit a million subscribers, what we've decided, I posted a poll, I don't know if you saw it or not, but I posted a poll, and what we decided is that I'm going to do a three-day survival challenge whenever I hit a million subscribers. So, if you want to see me suffer in the woods for three days, hit subscribe, it's free, it doesn't cost anything, all you gotta do is click a button. So, also, the videos, each video gets roughly like 200,000 views, and every single video, only 50% of you guys that watch it are subscribed. So, if, if everyone who's not subscribed just clicks the button, you guys could have that video in like probably three weeks, four weeks maybe. So if you want to see me suffer in the woods, click subscribe. That's what we're doing when we hit, when we hit a million. All right guys, so we are at the end of 2022. So 2022 has been, it's honestly been one of the greatest years of my life. This is, so thank you guys for that. This has been such a good year. Videos have been great. Overall, the, ch the channel's doing better than it's ever done before. Everything, it's just been a, a really great year. So I hope to carry that over into 2023. As most of you guys know, I always take, at the, at the beginning of every year, I always take the first two weeks of January off. So this will be the last video until I believe January 21st. I think, yeah, I think January 21st. I'll see you guys then. You guys sit back and enjoy this uh, video of all the best moments from 2022. And I'll see you in 2023. So this is our last product. Now, I want you to go on a little mental journey with me here. Let's say that you're a cowboy. And you're the most, you know, you're the most rootinous, tootinous cowboy there ever was, right? You're, you're chilling, you're at, the, you're at the saloon, let's say. You're drinking an ice cold root beer. You're just chilling at the saloon, doing cowboy stuff, drinking an ice cold root beer. All of a sudden, off in the distance, you hear some gunfire. You can't fire back with one hand. Where are you gonna put your root beer? Right there. I mean, do I, do I, do I need to say anything else? This is our product, the Bev Buckle. This is a belt buckle that is also a cup holder. If you were in the Wild West, you can put your drink here and then pull them out. You can bang, bang. You, you know, you're, you can be all rootin' tootin' and fire back and do whatever cowboy stuff you need to do. And you have your drink right here, but not only is it right here, it's also secure. So whenever you pull them out, you can, you can jerk back and forth and you can do whatever you need. Okay, you could do almost everything you need to do. Maybe, maybe, maybe don't get all too root and tootin' or you might lose your root beer. You should be able to you know, move around and do whatever you need. Do all your bang, bang, shoot them up. And once you get done, you can just go like this and drink you a nice cold root beer. So if you had a half inch hole in a pipe in your house, you'd be losing gallons upon gallons upon gallons of water per minute inside of your house. So could flex tape save you? Let's see. Here we go. Oh, it worked for a second. It stopped it. It literally stopped it just up until the point where it got pressurized again, and then that was it. You really have a better chance just stopping it with your finger. Not even that. You can't even stop it with your finger. Jeez, look at that. Oh. oh. That's it. I don't think I don't think any of these tapes are gonna stand a chance. Once that gets pressurized, there's no stopping it. All right, so here is the second cake. Oh, well, that's not a good sign. I think it's stuck. Come on. Oh, okay. Just gotta be a little rough with it. That feels way better. This one just feels like too, like, like just too moist. Let's cut this thing in half. Excuse me. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted. Oh, okay. So the middle of this one, like rock hard in the middle. 
This one I did not have as much mix as as uh, for this one. I thought it was I thought the um, like this thing was exactly half of the mix. I don't know. It's a little little more than half that I used for this one. So this I guess this one's a little a little hard on the bottom. Let's see about this. Oh, now I can tell you that is cooked cooked perfectly. Honestly, it's soft. It's moist. So th this cake maker, it works, and it works good. This could be just a little bit moist in the center, but you could fix that just by microwaving just a, a tad bit longer. But we can't, unfortunately, we can't taste this one because that that oil. So let's go ahead and let's give this one a taste. It tastes good. Just like regular Funfetti cake. So the first thing that we're going to do is I bought two... Uh, pairs of small, uh, I don't want to say side cutters, they call them something else. Obviously, if you just look at these, I don't have uh, like proof that both of these came from the exa exact same manufacturer, but if you just use your eyeballs, you can see that they are literally the exact same thing, like front, back, the locking mechanism is the exact same, the jaws look the exact same, they're the same size, the grips are very, very similar. So I think Amazon just kind of went to the manufacturer of these, which are WorkPro, and just said, like, you know, hey, give us some of those, and then here we are. Bottom's not burnt, nothing. This one is, the bottom is starting to get burnt. This one's actually probably pretty all right. I'd go, I'd, I would call that done. Oh, this one starting to burn all of a sudden. Why is this piece of bread taking so long? Do we need to move it? Move slots or something? Give this one the uh, the crunch test. I mean, that's toast. That is definitely some good toast. Like, just get a neck pillow and then wear something with a hood. Why do you, why do you even need the hood? Are you like, are you trying to stay warm? I don't know, float in the ocean and keep your head above water while you nap and then have like a hood in case it rains? Like it doesn't, the whole thing doesn't make sense. I could understand if this was just an inflatable neck pillow. Okay, if you like neck pillows and you want one that's inflatable, great, perfect. But why you gotta put a hood on top of it? The hood doesn't really do nothing. Just wear a hoodie. It's so stupid. Hood, hood for privacy and comfort. Draw string to block out light. Mm, inflatable for easy storage. Okay, I'll give you that, I'll give you that it's good, that good for storage. You're supposed to go like in a, in a circular motion with the egg, so. Nothing's happened. 10 seconds. Okay, that was 10 seconds. No way. No, nah, you're kidding me. It literally works. It's completely peeled. And there's the eggshell. I don't know why I'm shocked that a product works. So I got a stick of butter here, straight from the fridge. So now you're supposed to take this special butter knife and just like, Um, okay, I mean, I, oh, maybe you're supposed to do it like this, maybe? That does not seem to be working. I mean, I see kind of like what it's trying to do. Like, it's not any easier than just like, if you just took a regular butter knife, I feel like you could just... Yeah, you could just scoop up butter like that. If, in fact, if you use it like a regular butter knife, it scoops up the butter better than if you were to try to use it like this and try to get it to like spread through these little holes or whatever. It like just collects on the backside even more. So like how how is this more useful? Maybe like maybe you need to do it like on a piece of toast or something? Like maybe there's I don't know, something I'm missing. We're not done with the smokeless grill. We have another thing that we're gonna cook on here. As of right now, I think, oh, see, here's, here comes a lot of smoke from the grease. 
Let's turn that on. I think it's just blowing the smoke out of the bottle. Yeah, I can see it over here. The smoke's just coming out from under the bottom. Maybe it's coming out of here. Okay, this is not a smokeless grill. This is just a smoke rearranger grill. Now I can see it. And then we should just be able to twist. Um, I mean, it's working, I guess. That is, <laughs> that's gonna take, it's working, but it's gonna take forever. Come on. What are you supposed to cut a hole in like 15 years? I think the, I think my battery's dying. Yeah, my battery's dying. All right, now we should have plenty of power. Okay, this seems to be a problem. The metal is too flimsy, which I don't know how you would combat that. Come on. I think this thing sucks. Or it's just not, it's just not made to do what I'm doing, which all I'm trying to do is cut a hole. Espresso machine. I already read the, the, not the destructions, the instructions. Destruction is what I do. From what I read, I think this is the cap. So the ca it has a cap. This acts as like a cup. I don't know, I think that's the, that's the scoop for the coffee. This doesn't look like the instructions. Okay, I think I got this figured out. So this is the, the like the, this is the cup. This is where it comes out of. This holds the, the coffee grounds, like a reusable filter thing. And then this is like, this thing has a, like a pump, so you can like force the water through. So we got some coffee, some country roast coffee. We'll use our little scoop here, and that goes into there. This goes into there like that. No, this goes into here. There we go. And then you can put this on top of here. This thing is like, I feel like it's more complicated than it needs to be. And this is where we put the hot water. I think that might be too much. Oh yeah, that was a little too much. Oh, it's hot. Oh, okay. It's full to capacity. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was way faster than I expected. All right, so there's our, <laughs> there's our flashlight and our uh, headlight. Okay, there's our flashlight. And here is, <laughs> here is our headlight. So let's get this ice off of here. All right, let's see if these things still work. There's, <laughs> okay. My bet is probably gonna be no. No way. Really? I can even see ice inside of the lens. I did not I did not think in a million years that was gonna work. Alright, let's uh let's try the headlamp. And of course, the headlamp still works. Oh the zoom still seems to be a little bit frozen. Oh. Oh look at that. Oh, that's gonna be so good. That needs to cool down so I can taste that. That is gonna be so good. It's cooled down now. <laughs> Time for the first bite. I almost don't want to take the first bite because I know there's gonna it's it's all gonna be downhill from there. The first one's gonna be the best one. They're still really hot. That was deceiving to think that it had cooled down. Although, even though it's hot, it's so good. It's so good. 
if I had some whipped cream, put some whipped cream on top or something. I gave, I put on both tapes, I applied them, I gave them four inches of gripping area, we'll say, onto the plate, because that's what it looks like he did in the commercial. Let's see if they can hold it. Flex tape is first. Oh, they can hold it. Although it's very, it's slowly, it's slowly stretching. For sure. But it holds it, no problem. Now, Alien Shield. Will it be able to hold it? And here's, you can kind of see here what I was talking about, how here it's like very, like dense and like thick. Whereas the Flex Seal, you can see is very, very like rubbery. Nostalgia, we've tested a lot of stuff from Nostalgia. This is a bacon press and griddle. You can see it's like some like briefcase looking griddle thing that you're supposed to be able to cook bacon and eggs and sausage and pancakes all at the same time. Seems a little ambitious. We'll see. Something to mention. Let's keep them like this, I guess. Most basic task. We'll just staple two sheets of paper, see if they can do it. Okay, let me uh, inspect the staple. I am a professional staple inspector. Actually, let me staple with this one first and then we'll compare. Hmm. This is a much better staple. I'm gonna have to bring you in close so that you can see all the details. So here's the difference. This is the Amazon stapler back here and this is the swing line up here. You can see that the Amazon stapler staples a little bit too hard. So you end up with the points coming back through the front sheet of the paper. Obviously, this is like not really a big deal and it's being super picky. This is a better quality staple. And that is uh, not really what you wanna see on your important documents. Crazy picky there. Oh, that's not gonna work. <laughs> you could turn it on and off with a water bottle. All right, let me try this inflated gummy worm. Oh, man. Man. That is not good. The, wow. So how puffed up it is, it's kind of deceiving because it makes you think that it's gonna be like crunchy or something, but it's not crunchy at all. It's just like, it's almost like it's just like puff and then you, when you crunch down on it, it just becomes like the center. It's like the outside is like light and airy and then the inside is like the thickest, most dense, like chewiness ever. I don't know, charcoal rope? It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be waterproof. Yeah, let's just put the whole thing in there. Okay, it's in water. And it doesn't light. Imagine that. Maybe it will after it dries. All right. <laughs> Still not lighting. Still not lighting. This is not looking good at all. This is the greatest fire starter I've ever seen. All right, let's just forget about the water. Let's try it dry. Oh, well, I hit the edge of it and it kind of like cracked. This is, this is my, this is the way that I perceive this thing. I. <laughs> The way I look at it, if you need something like this to hold your nails so that you don't smash your fingers, maybe you shouldn't be driving nails. Maybe you should be doing something else. If your aim is so bad that you can't just hold a nail, and not even if your aim is bad, you're still fine. If you can't do this and then hit it 
Maybe maybe you shouldn't be having maybe you shouldn't have a hammer. Maybe you shouldn't be driving nails. I just don't see a use for this thing. The only the only exception, the only reason that I could see, the only benefit I could see for this thing would be if you had like a young child and you were trying and they wanted to, I don't know, build a birdhouse or like whatever whatever kids want to do. You could have them use this so that way they don't smash their fingers because they're not used to like hammering nails and whatnot. But like Outside of that, I don't, I don't, like, I can't think of, like, a good use for this thing. And I especially cannot think of a good use for it whenever things like pliers exist. Hold the nail. There you go. Next, we got a V-seat. This is the exact same thing as that pillow that I tested in the last video. All right, just blow it up, and then you get a nice little seat. We've already seen that. That's nothing fancy. Get out of here. So now I'm just going to cut through this little area right here. This is a, a portion of grass that I've let grow specifically for this video, not because I'm lazy. It's gotten really thick, like probably with four C's. So, so we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it does. Okay, I, I, I was wrong, and it, I'm impressed with that, because that's, that's the biggest one that I have, and I did not think that it was going to be able to get that in. Now, one thing, one thing that there is uh, to mention, like, it's not hot, but it smells like grease really bad. I don't know if it's just, like, the drill or if it's, the like, the head. I think it's this head. It has a, an extremely strong grease smell. Bucket test. I got a bucket, two inch hole in it. That's the size that we're gonna go with. We're gonna see if they can stop the leak. All right, so we got our bucket full of water. Let me just get our tape. Oh, I don't know if this is gonna work. Two inches might have been a little bit ambitious. Oh, come on. All right, if I slap this on with the might of Zeus, it should work. Three. Two, one. Oh. That was actually impressive. I missed it and I was able to rip it off and stick it back on. Now, it is leaking. So first, since you have to close the thing to cook the bacon, we'll do the bacon first. Let me get out my little knife here. Yeah, there we go. So about right there, save a little bit of room. So, obviously with coffee, you need cream and sugar. So let's see, I'm, I'm really curious, I just wanna see how much cream and sugar I can cram into this thing, because it should, it should mix up pretty good. Let's go ahead and get that going. All right, I probably got, uh, I don't know, two, two tablespoons maybe of sugar. That's doing a pretty good job. I mean, I don't know how you guys like your coffee, but I think that looks just about right. Maybe we'll just add in just like, I don't know, just a little bit more sugar. This, uh, this is almost, this is almost double the price of this and it doesn't even feel half as good. The handle feels very cheap. It's very like top heavy. Like it just doesn't feel balanced at all. It's like it just wants to like fall out of your hand. I don't know. It just does not feel, does not feel good at all. I didn't even feel the edge of the other one. This feels like it has been sharpened on like, by like a caveman on a rock. It's like, it's like they just shipped this thing back to uh, the caveman days and some guy just ground it on a rock. And that's like what it feels like. Literally the blade part doesn't even feel much sharper than the back. Oh, you can already, you can almost already see the bubbles. Oh, 
Oh, you can see you can see all the bubbles forming. I feel like it's gonna start coming out of the top. Oh, oh no. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you can carbonate Tabasco sauce, all right. Let's just cap that off. Not where I wanted this to go. This is gonna be so bad, especially in 30 days. I should have. I should have opened all of these uh, all these bottles up and just dumped them all in real fast. All right, we gotta we gotta get moving. This is, this is getting bad. If this is what it smells like now. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like in 30 days. <coughs> <coughs> like some type of gas or or something. I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this. It's a good thing I haven't eaten yet. Okay. Oh yeah. Whew. Okay, thankfully it doesn't look like we're going to need the third bottle. Okay. Oh, it sucks. <coughs> oh, wow. The smell is getting bad. It sucks that I got to... Oh, I didn't even fill that one up. Okay, so we're going to need this one. Alright, fill that up. This one needs to be filled up to the top so the flashlight's fully submerged. That is the top. We gotta get these we gotta get these lids on here. This is <clears throat> uh I'll see you guys in 30 days. I'm getting out of here. A little bit of a taste test. Make sure it doesn't taste like weird or anything. No. Does it taste like normal bacon? This pancake? Yeah, it all tastes normal. So I'm gonna rate this thing like nine out of 10. This thing, I usually don't give these things very good scores. These like all-in-one breakfast makers. And I usually don't like them because they usually suck. This one's actually really good and I really like it. All right, I know you guys love this. <sighs> this is literally one of, the, one of the worst smells in the world. <clears throat> Gets me every time. Very, very strong smell. I'm just gonna use a little bit of Dawn. Just a little bit. That's enough. Let's see how much of a difference that makes. Scrub all that smell away. Now, let's see. Yeah. I don't smell anything. Maybe a little bit of something, like maybe it's like 99% gone. Just the water by itself got rid of the smell like 80 or 90%. And I mean, it was the same with the, with the rub away. This thing doesn't even work. You get the same, the same effect with this as you would if you just got your hands wet or if you just use a little bit of soap and just wash your hands like normal. Who would have thought that that would work? How this is supposed to work? Like, I don't know the science behind this thing, but it does nothing. All right, it's been about nine minutes. Uh, it's getting really smoky in here, so I'm gonna leave. Uh, if anything catches on fire, you guys will be the first ones to know. I feel confident that everything's gonna be all right. I'll be back in like 20 minutes. Jeez. Well, uh, okay, no fire there. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. So this thing is kind of crispy and it's just made a lot of smoke. <coughs> I can see the smoke rolling outside. So I'm gonna turn these cameras off and uh, turn this place out. This is the Gorilla Glue. We're gonna test it first. gonna take quite a bit to break this. Oh, maybe not. Mm. 
No, oh, never mind. Let's put on some, uh, some safety glasses. Just in case this thing gets a little crazy. Something is creaking. I don't know if it's the block or if it's the ceiling. What are we at? 450. All right. Why is it so, <laughs> so hard? The, the blocks are gonna break. Okay, I think the block just broke. I don't think the, uh, I don't think we actually pulled it apart. I don't even know if you can see it there. Our final weight was 488. And it looks like our failure point was probably the wood, not so much the uh, glue. Yeah, so <laughs> we, uh, the block split in half. So a hurricane isn't just wind, it's wind and rain. So let's get some rain. I didn't realize that my water hose had a leak until now. Let's try a little, little rain. Oh, that's gonna be no problem. Wind and rain. Oh, it's already peeling off. Oh, this water hose. Well, that's not a very good, that's not a very good sign. How are you gonna stick to a window in a hurricane if you can't even withstand a little bit of rain? And that's like. That's like a light rain compared to a hurricane. Put the battery in. You turn this thing on, and then there's a fan that sucks air across this radiator. And then also, this tube pumps out water. So this thing circulates the cold water through this radiator. Air goes across the radiator. Air comes out here. And then that air is supposed to be cold, giving you air conditioning. We'll see about that. Everything, the idea, I think it's a, a decent idea, uh, it might even work all right. Here's where my problem is. This thing is almost $400. That's my problem. So at that price point, for almost $400, this thing better work. It better be amazing. And not only should it keep me cool, it should also like rub my feet, make me dinner, tuck me in at night, read me bedtime stories. It should do everything at that price point. Really smack it. Oh no, I spilt the bag. Huh? Well, good thing I have more than one bag. Okay, this stuff, this, this stuff is strong. Just from my fingers being a little bit wet, it wouldn't even stick to my fingers. So I have very, very low expectations. I don't think this is gonna work at all. Here we go. I mean, to be fair, I've messed this up. All right, I guess we'll have to do that again. You can see I kind of like messed it up and folded the corner over. That actually kind of worked a little better than I thought. All right, try to. I'm gonna try to be a little bit slower and more careful whenever I apply it so I don't fold it over. Here we go. That, that's actually working. So the next thing is we have a rapid microwave cake maker. Now I'm no baker, but uh, something about uh, cake in the microwave just doesn't really seem like it's gonna work. Whenever I was a kid, I tried to cook uh, cookies in the microwave and they caught on fire. So, I mean, this might work. Maybe cake is different than cookies. We'll see. So what you're supposed to do is it comes with this like measuring thing and that is what we need our butter for. It has this container, and each thing is labeled. It says like cake, this is cake mix, oil, water, and two eggs. And this is supposed to help you measure out all of your mix. You dump it in here, mix it up, and then this is what you put in the microwave. Absolutely beautiful. Now I'm just gonna <laughs> sit here and hold this until it dries, and then we are ready to go. All right, so this is how it turned out. This is the finished product. You can see our handle here. This thing, I, I, I honestly, I don't even want to torture test this thing because it came out so good and I'm so happy with it. It's, the handle is just the right thickness. It's just the right width. It's, it feels good. It's got a good weight to it. You can hold it with 
Hold it with both hands, one hand. You can hold it whichever way you want. I mean, this thing, for, for what I was working with, I'm very, very happy with the way this thing turned out. Now, something I'm, I'm worried about, if that shoe is gonna shred the name brand one that easy and cause all these like flakes and all that stuff, and this is the high quality one. So this one, I feel like is not really gonna even stand a chance. Although it might clean very good. Let's see, let's tr first try it like, like right here. Okay. That's pretty decent. I like that. I mean, that came really clean and that did a really good job. Oh, we gotta get along this rubber. I mean, that looks really good. That's impressive to me. It's, it is, I mean, yet again, performing the, like, you're getting the same result with this versus the name brand. Let's go back to this toe right here. It just comes off so easy. Wow. It's so easy. So, seems like, yet again, the performance is about the same. Now, <laughs> after that, I mean, we, ba <laughs> we barely have anything left. It's like dissolved into almost nothing. This is still like, I don't know, 95% of what we started with. This is like 30% of what we started with. So I have some zucconies here. It, it kind of just looks like a cucumber, to be honest with you. I think we need to cut this end off. Is a zucchini just like a fancy cucumber? That's like what it looks like. It doesn't really smell like much of anything. Now, normally, this thing has a suction cup on the bottom, but obviously we're on wood. That's not gonna work. Oh, you know, maybe we should go this side. Oh, no, okay. No way. This is super easy. This is like almost no effort at all. Okay. I don't know like what in the world you would use this for. I guess there's some type of cooking where you want this to be cut like this. All right. Oh, look at that. That's already worked incredibly well. It's like, whatever that powder is or whatever, it's collected a lot of the dirt. And it's just all gonna, it's all just gonna fall to the bottom, I guess. It says the minimum time is 30 minutes. I guess we'll just let it sit here for 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And uh, we'll come back and see, see how clear the water gets. It has been uh, about, about an hour or so. I mean, you can see all of this stuff that has collected in the bottom part of it so that's a lot of the dirt and I guess bacteria or whatever you can't see it on camera really but I can see in person I can see all a bunch of particles and other stuff especially right around this nozzle which is supposed to be where you get the water out of to drink so it's like it's like 90% clear there's still all these particles of all this dirt still floating around here at the bottom and it's not actually falling like it should. I think I, I think I understand what the, what the complaint is. Because the, the bottom is already like brown and it's gonna start burning and you can't even flip them over. Because it's definitely, you can see the underside of that. It's definitely gonna start burning. I guess we can let it sit for a minute. Hope for the best. Now we're spilling over here on the edges. Great. So let's Let's just <laughs> give it our best shot at flipping it. Okay, now we're obviously gonna have to try this again <laughs> because I think there's a good chance that our entire problem could have stemmed from the fact that I overfilled them. That's definitely what you wanna see. <laughs> there's all, there's all. All your little pancakes. <laughs> Next, we got a little book. First Aid and Survival, The Stay Alive Guide. Let's just flip to a random page here and see what we got. How to read a compass, compass magnetic declination, burns, diarrhea. Di diarrhea, let's see what we should do. Abnormally frequent bowel movements with loose and watery stools, usually the result of an infection or irritation, viruses, bacteria, and food poisoning. Treatment. Rest. Okay, well I guess if you're in the middle of the woods and you're 
stranded, you should just rest. Avoid dehydration. Rest and plenty of fluids are usually all that all that is required within the first 12 to 24 hours, unless the diarrhea is frequent and substantial amount of water is lost. Thank you so much. Very useful information. The ultimate self-sufficiency manual. Grow, build, farm, survive. I'm assuming this is just a whole book about like growing plants and stuff. Why? I don't understand why anybody would read a book whenever you have YouTube. I mean, it's a little crunchy. I think it's just stale, to be honest with you. Now this, this is just a stale Pop-Tart. I have had brown sugar and cinnamon Pop-Tarts that were stale. This is a stale Pop-Tart. It does collapse. It's not the smoothest to kind of get back, but it's not bad. It's real thin. I imagine it would be, it would work great as a bucket. There's only one test we can do. It does in fact hold water and you can use it for a bucket things. Oh, there we go. We can pour the water back. So that's the collapsible bucket test. Now's the time you're supposed to freak out and not know what to do. And then you, I don't know, do something you're not supposed to and burn your house down. But we're not gonna panic because we have a fire extinguisher. Let's see, we got a raging grease fire and we're just gonna put it out. Excuse me? This is a fire extinguisher? <laughs> I mean, it's out. But did you see the fireball that it created? That seems like, that seems like that would be the last thing that you would want. <laughs> I expected it to just like, like you just spray it and it just would go out. If I can get these things open. Ah, get off me. They honestly kind of smell like baby wipes too. Okay, so these are pretty big cloths. So these are supposed to, they're just cleaning cloths. That's what it says. It says bigger, tougher, fiercely clean. Jeez, I don't know. I guess they caught coyotes and made them pee on leather for them or something. I literally can't even think. I think I'm losing brain cells. I don't know, it, it dyed the leather, okay? It made it darker, it's physically really happened to it, it just really, really stinks now, and it's like a darker shade of brown. I don't know, I don't know what else you want from me. I mean, I am suffering. I think I might puke. I mean, I'm no model maker or anything, but pretty good little hammer. It's got a nice thick handle for dexterity. Two, two flat surfaces. I say we let that dry just like that. I think in about an hour, I think we'll be in business. All right, let's lay down. This is like nothing. Like what? Well, never mind. So if you lay down, it, it keeps you from touching the ground. But if you sit up, like as soon as like as soon as I go like this, I'm touching the ground. So like you have to be like perfectly flat to dis evenly distribute your weight enough to uh, not touch the ground. I don't think, let me see if maybe I can get some more here. I mean, that's as, that's as far as I can go. Oh. Yeah, as, so as soon as you sit down on it, you have to evenly distribute your weight. All right, there we go. Now it's gotta be, there we go. Jeez. I did not think that was gonna be that difficult. So there we have our lantern <laughs> over here on this side. And then that uh, that weight is uh, frozen in there because the, the lantern would not stay down in there. So I had to freeze them both. So let's bust this thing out of here. I think this is the perfect job for our electric hammer. I forgot what it's like to use this thing. Oh, 
All right. Try not to smash these things. Oh! <laughs> Didn't catch it in time. Oh, night core. All right, so that was the night core. Let's see. This big rock. So let's go ahead and <laughs> do our worst. Ooh, ooh, yikes, that, that, that hurts. Ooh, that hurts. All right, I feel like that's enough. Install one of these films, unless maybe like for a hurricane or something, if it's even that strong, which I guess we'll see. I feel like somebody next to a golf course is probably gonna be the most likely person to try to install one of these films. So we'll go with a golf ball. All right, this is our control. Wow, all right. Maybe you don't need the film. Fine, I'll throw it really hard. All right, so that window, that is hard. I think I left it up there for about an hour, so it should be more than enough. Let's go ahead and reveal the rain -X. Okay. So we're left with some weird, some, some hard layer. And it looks like there's a little bit of resin that maybe didn't dry somehow. And we are supposed to, we're supposed to scrape all this off. So there's our original chip. That actually looks pretty good. All right, so that actually, I mean, there's still, it was a pretty deep chip, so you can kind of still see where it was, but it's not spider webbed out like it was. And it actually, it looks pretty solid. See where the liquid stitch falls on this lineup. All right, it's already, it's already peeling apart. Wow. Wow. <laughs> this fabric blue is, it's, I want to say it's disappointing, but it's literally about what I expected. So that right there had about 13 pounds and did just like the rest of them do. It just, as soon as it got a little bit of pressure, it just kind of pulled apart and that was really it. Now we have 15 sheets for each one of them, bumping it up past the uh, recommended maximum. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think that it liked that at all. Let's see how this one handles it. Okay, they can both handle past the maximum. I just don't think this is gonna work very good. We have a can. A beef stew? This can might be too big for this, honestly. So you're just supposed to, and then push the button. What did I say? Oh, wait a minute. I'm gonna look like an idiot. It actually is working. I thought it wasn't working because I, cu I couldn't hear it like cutting the metal. Usually with a can opener, you can hear it like nah, 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 as it like cuts through the metal. No way. That actually worked flawlessly. I could have swore 
that I didn't test this because it was I thought it was going to be a piece of garbage. That blows my mind. I cannot believe that cut that so perfectly with not a single hiccup. Is this not is this not watertight? What's happening here? We should be able to just lift this up and then just kind of pump it out, I guess. Oh, I hear it. Ooh. Must have had Taco Bell. Why does that look so good, actually? Okay. Can't hold it to the side. You gotta hold it up. I don't know if you're supposed to go, like, really fast. Okay. I think that's all the water. I mean, I kind of made a mess. I assume if you know what you're doing, uh, it's not gonna be a mess at all. I don't know why it's so, like frothy looking. I guess that's just what it does maybe from the pressure of this thing. Let's see if it did a good job. I don't <laughs> I don't really like coffee or I don't think I've ever even had an espresso. It smells alright I guess. <clears throat> it works I guess. That uh that makes my eyes water. As far as I'm concerned that works and that is really cool. I, uh, I'm gonna have to find a very creative use for this, and I'll, I'll do something interesting. <laughs> I think Faraday cages are just supposed to block all types of signals. If you were afraid of maybe like an EMP or something, you could like put electronics in this and then it would be safe. I don't know how you would know that like an EMP is coming, so you could like throw your cell phone in here. Um, I don't know. Maybe if you're like on the run and you don't want to be tracked or something, you could put your electronics inside of this. I don't, really know, I don't really know what else you would use it for. It might be waterproof. The silent Faraday, Faraday dry bag collection blocks cellular, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, signal, sat nav, key fob, EMF, EMP, RFID, water, and solar. So you're supposed to put your device in here and then I said roll this down at least four times. And then know, and then know that you and your device are shielded from whatever. Okay, so if you're into that kind of thing, I'm sure it work, it would work. So 426 pounds is going to be the time is going to be the weight to beat. See if this uh, Dollar Tree super glue can even get close. I just I just don't think it's going to be anywhere close. I think it's too cheap, and I think it's going to be maybe like. 60 pounds at best. Uh, I, think I, was, I think I was wrong. Oh, we're at 93. Yep, I was wrong. <laughs> this might be another case of broken wooden blocks. Oh yeah, this is gonna, we're gonna break the wood blocks again. No, oh, jeez. All right, yeah. We broke the blocks again. Oh, okay. So, with the uh, Dollar Tree Super Glue, we got 466 pounds. So, that's actually an improvement over the Loctite. All right, for the Fiskers, <laughs> I see this being a, uh, I was gonna say slight disaster, probably more than that. Try to remember what I learned from the last one. We need a downward slice. We need to be like middle of the blade. No way. Messed up the light again. The three-quarter one swung at it 45 times and never could get it to cut, except for just very rarely. But this one cuts on the first try. If I can get two in a row, smooth two in a row, we'll just move right on to the, to the inch and a half. Of course. Of course. Why would we get two in a row? It's just barely hanging on by a thread. Come on. Do we really, do we really just get lucky on the first one? Two in a row. That's all we need. Two in a row. All right, that's one. Real simple. Number two. Are you serious? Maybe if we go slow. What is that? Oh, okay, I remember. I remember what this is. Oh, just let me grab it. This is a, a piece of meat. 
Okay. <coughs> oh no. Oh. Oh, that's so bad. That is so bad. I gotta. I gotta get out of here. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta get out of here. It's. it's this is this is horrible. This is like this is like torture. It's it's rotten meat. It, it's it's very 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 strong rotten meat smell with the the kind of urine smell mixed in, and it's it, it's horrible. It's <coughs> <coughs> let's uh get just like some drywall nails. That no problem at all. It didn't even like damage the face of the hammer. Way better than you would expect. That is crazy. Let's try, try some longer nails. Okay, now we're starting to kinda make some divots and peel some plastic back. These nails are a lot harder to get in there. Okay, that we're just gonna end up bending that. Let's go again just for safe measure. Maybe I'll get like a little bit of a running start. This thing literally, there's absolutely nothing, nothing wrong with it at all. Flex tape, will flex tape do any better? Let's see, all right, they get on here. Roll around, round up and down, put this thing under some, some pressure. Oh! I can hear it. There's no, well, there's kind of bubbles. It's leaking right out of here. I don't know if you guys can hear that. But it's 100% it's leaking right out of there. Microwave went high for five minutes. Except for, I saw, maybe maybe we can cut back to before I put the ingredients in. If you could see it, I'm pretty sure the bottom of it said to put it in the microwave for six minutes. I guess we'll do we'll do five, and then we'll see, uh, see if we need an extra minute. So, after six minutes, this is what we got. Excuse me, rude. Anyway, this, this is what we got. Um, All right, that, the butter worked great, didn't stick. Eh, it stuck a little bit, but not nothing crazy. It seems a little bit wet to me, but maybe it just needs to dry. Maybe we can flip it over a little bit. So we're just gonna let that sit here and kind of like dry. And what I'm gonna do is since I have some more cake mix, I'm gonna make another one, except apparently according to, well first, according to Google, Apparently vegetable oil does go bad, so I will not be eating this, especially since it's been bad for four years. So apparently you can replace oil with butter. So I'm gonna do that, make another batch, and then I'm gonna taste that one so I can see how it tastes. These were in a bag and it said sweet potatoes. I don't know what this is. It doesn't even really look like a potato. What exactly makes it, why they call it a sweet potato? It doesn't smell sweet actually kind of smells a little bit bad. They look like garbage. This one looks like the skin is like gonna like dry off or something. I think this might be a little bit too big for the, hmm, that one fits. But anyway, so I wanna see if these sweet potatoes will will work in the same thing. I don't even know what country these things come from. It's, they're very strange to me. So let's do this. Oh, wait a minute. Why are they orange? Is there is there something wrong with them? Why are they orange? What kind of what kind of potato is orange? I don't under, what I don't understand. What's what's happening here? What country are these things from? Are they all orange? Try the credit card. <laughs> it shoots it shoots the credit card even more than the other one. <laughs> Two side by side. I could literally, I could do that all day. I don't know why that's so much fun. In case you didn't know, first step when using a stud finder, you gotta make sure it works. This one works. Let's see what we got. Oh, there's a stud here. I bet if we go about right there, 
Look at that. That's okay. You don't have to take no pictures, no flash photography. I'll be here all week. It's hard being this good. It's a tough job. Somebody has to do it though. It should take about five minutes. Now, <laughs> I don't think that microwave steak is gonna taste that good. Maybe I'll be proven wrong. See you in five minutes. All right, five minute steak. Let's see. You can kind of still hear it sizzling. This thing is still very hot. I don't think that that's gonna be, jeez. Oh, I did not want those juices to run on the table. Oh, well. all right, let's cut this thing in half, see where we're at. Really? Probably a little bit too, uh, probably a little bit too well done, to be honest with you. That's not bad at all though, for five minutes. See how rubbery it is. That's pretty, uh, <laughs> I mean, it tastes like it came out of a microwave. Very chewy. Yeah, not really at all how you'd expect. Does it cook the steak? Yeah, it cooks the steak. It does a decent job. I don't know that it really cooks the steak that much different than if you just threw the steak in the microwave. It might. It's kind of got some of the grill marks here. Can it cook a steak? Yes. Should you cook a steak in this if you plan on eating it and it tasting good? No, <laughs> just this is not how you cook a steak. All right, so I'm done with my homemade macaroni and cheese. That took way longer than expected. I've never, I've never made such a big batch. It just took way longer than I expected. So let's dump all this in here. This is a, a family recipe. It's actually been in my family for generations. Have to make you have to make the noodles yourself. Leave a link to like the recipe or something in the comments if you're interested. This one looks a little, a little moist. As Grandma always said, just mix it all up and nobody will know. Flatten that out right there. That actually worked out to be about the perfect amount. Tastes good, just like Grandma used to make. Let's see what temperature we are starting off with. Uh, about 140 degrees, give or take. 140, 143. We'll call it, we'll call it 140. There we go. <laughs> Lock the lid down. We'll come back in six hours. We'll see where we're at. All right, it's been six hours. Let's see what we're dealing with here. Let's see if there's any steam. <laughs> no. There's a, <laughs> there's a lot of condensation though. There's a little bit of warmth I can feel. Let's get our temperature probe in here. Okay. Down at the bottom, we're at 95. So we only lost like 40 degrees over six hours. I mean, that's not bad. Get in here for a taste test down here at the, at the bottom. Ninety-five degree macaroni and cheese. <laughs> it's not, does not even feel warm, hardly. Yeah, that just feels like room temperature. There we go, beautiful. And we close this. You guys are gonna have a fit in the comments if this works out perfect the first try. You're not gonna know what to do. I'm not liking how there's like no way to know if it's full or not. You just kind of have to hope. Okay, that actually looks like it's too much. That's what it is. Should have known. Once again, I overfilled the thing. Yeah, that's gonna just bubble up and overfill. Remember what I said about uh, you guys are gonna go crazy if I if this all works out smoothly at the first try? That's not gonna happen. I also have no idea how long I'm supposed to wait. I don't think this thing came with any directions. Scratch that. It did come with directions. That is, that's bubbling up even more. Oh. Do we think it's gonna just pour out when I open it? Oh, no. It's actually like pretty good. It's got some uh, raw batter in the middle. All right, last thing. How about an old cell phone from the, from the video where I put uh, a bunch of cell phones in the rock tumbler? Let's see if we can cut it in half. Oh. No problem. 
Wow. I think I cut the battery in half. I think that's very dangerous. I actually think that's extremely dangerous. There's the cross section of a cut in half cell phone, if you were ever wondering. Cause it like, it's starting to smell weird. Yeah, that was the, that was the battery. Yeah, probably not my best move. We're gonna put that outside. Mini gas station, hot dog station. Oh wow, that turns them slow. I'm assuming that's what the, what the timer feature is supposed to do. So I have, I have a screwdriver so that we can, oh. Hopefully if you were to buy this, you wouldn't have to do that. So this lid is also supposed to stay open while you do this. I don't feel any heat at all. I feel nothing. Oh, I see smoke. Where, why is it smoking? I probably should have turned this on for a while before I put the hot dogs on there. It has a very strange smell. I guess we'll do this one first. I'm gonna try not to get the battery pack in there. The thought of a battery exploding inside of hot oil and putting oil everywhere, that just doesn't really excite me. We'll turn it on. And let, <laughs> let's just lower it in there and just see what happens to the light itself. Okay, that was a couple seconds and it still works. It's still on. I don't know how it's still on. It seems to be feeling full of oil. I, I honestly didn't think it would even last this long. My, I mean, is it literally just gonna last until the oil like just deforms it enough that it doesn't work? It's literally, like it's literally melting and deforming itself, but the light is still working just fine. No problem. Literally the outer casing is gonna like start to melt before the light fails, I think. I mean, do, do, do we just sit here until the light stops? We'll let that kind of chill there. And let's dunk the flashlight in. We'll turn it on. I'm just gonna hold on to it by the string. Oh, it's starting to fill up. Oh no, what is happening? Why is it doing that? Uh, I think there, I think there might still be water inside the flashlight. Maybe that's why it's reacting that way. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's dip it in here. Let's we'll close this lid. Both lights are still on. I don't know why the flashlight is bubbling so much. This, <laughs> this is. I feel like this is not a very smart decision. That's how I feel right now. It, it keeps bubbling for something. I don't know why it keeps bubbling. I don't know how much time they've been in here, but it's, <laughs> it's way longer than I expected. I mean, this is, the, the boiling water was of course 212 degrees. This is 375 degrees in oil. And they're still going. I don't, I don't, oh, something just turned off. The flashlight turned off. All right, so whatever the time was, that's how long the flashlight will survive inside, inside of uh, 375 degree oil. I'm going to put this outside just in case those batteries decide that they're gonna do something crazy. All right, I feel like we're, I feel like we're out of danger. We'll keep these batteries out. But this thing, this light, this light is still going. Like nothing. Look at it. It's like everything is like melting off of this thing. Oh, and the light, the housing. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh man, I ruined it. The light just died. I wonder if it died because I picked it up or if that was just a coincidence. I mean, it has been inside of 375 degree oil for at least a few minutes now. You know what I just realized? I think I know why nothing is happening and I don't know how you would fix it. Okay, so it's doing it right on that one. <laughs> the blades spin backwards. Because here, the cutting edge is on this side. But it spins, it spins the complete wrong way. So that, that's why nothing happens. I'm assuming it only goes one way. Like there's, only, like there's no way to, it's just an on and an off button. There's no way to like reverse the, there's no directions. There's no way there's gonna be a way to reverse it. 
It doesn't say anything about reversing the direction. Which, why, why would you need to reverse the direction, theoretically, on a food processor? You would think that if you were going to manufacture a product, you would at least know what direction your blades are going to spin. I can't believe that I waited an extra hour and a half to charge this thing to give it another shot when the blades were spinning backwards the entire time. Now let's see. Oh, wow. <laughs> see how effective that is? Now, instead of having that in your eyes, now you get this in your eyes. That is so much better. This works amazing. I don't know how I would ever live without these. I think you get the point. It's, uh... <laughs> these things suck bad. Outlet relocator. Move your outlet where you need it. It's a, basically a four foot extension cord that you plug into the wall and then you have this sticky pad on the back of this and they have like a nice little plate like plate cover. They added some USB ports, whatever. You plug it in, you stick this on the wall wherever you would like your outlet to be and then away you go. It, it, sound, it seems like a good idea. My first complaint isn't, isn't even about the product. My first complaint is about the website because you can't you can't just get this thing on Amazon. You have to get it from the Presto Plug website. And this website literally looks like it was made in the mid 1970s. Like they just made it in the 1970s and then it, that's it. Never touched it. They've never done an update in their entire lives. They just left the website exactly the way it is. Never touched it. And whenever you go to check out the I bought a two pack so whenever you go to check out, you have to answer like 15 questions just to check out. You go to check out and they're like, oh, well you have two. Do you want three for, do you want three for a 10% discount? And you say no. And they're like, oh, are you sure? How about a 20% discount? Oh, do you want like a replacement pad plan for X amount a month? And do you want, and you say no. And then, okay, well, uh, do you want like a fourth for this amount? And they like this, they keep asking you all these questions. Do you want this? 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 Like, at that point, no, I don't even really want your product. Um, it was so irritating. Okay, this is a little bit ambitious here, I think. Okay, it says it's a sundial up here. Uh, okay, good luck with that. Who knows how to read a sundial? Rope tensioner right here, which, okay, I can see that. A ruler. Tent peg puller right here. It's a little ambitious. Pry bar right here. That's... That's very ambitious. Ferro rod striker, which is right here, I guess. So you can... Ah, there we go. Not the best ferro rod. A rope cutter, right here. Flat screwdriver, which is... <laughs> that flat screwdriver piece, that is very ambitious. That is like maybe a sixteenth of an inch of a little tiny lip. I don't know what kind of screws you're going to be undoing with that, but it ain't going to be much. And it says that this is a can opener. Okay. I think this is, I think this is very ambitious. I think at, at most, this is slightly decent fire starter with a rope cutter and an inch ruler. And that's about it. Now let's see if we can cut through this. Much easier. Although, the teeth on the blade are completely gone. So this is the teeth on the blade. You can see, obviously, good teeth over here. Completely shredded. I'm just gonna hit it just really hard and see if that helps. Ah, those upward swings just, <laughs> those are just, just not it. I think that's what that's what's doing the bending. I should be able to maybe kind of straighten this out. Uh, huh, interesting. And then try. So that's what I have here. This has been sitting out on my counter for 24 hours. And also in my defense, I didn't know that this was even a thing. I didn't know that people just let butter sit out on the counter and that you can do that and it would, it'll be fine. Um, Growing up, we always had butter that was in a tub, and that tub was always in the fridge. So whenever I was approaching this video, my mindset was butter. Butter is dairy. Dairy goes in the fridge. 
So that's why I kind of did everything, you know, with the, with the pulling the butter straight out of the fridge or just letting it sit for 30 minutes or an hour or whatever. Because, like I said, I didn't know that people just let sticks of butter sit out on the counter. We're going to try again. And you guys were right, obviously. That butter curls just like it's supposed to. And I would imagine it does it both ways. Yeah. You can see that. That, <laughs> that is exactly like what the picture showed. It curls beautifully. It's actually like oddly satisfying. Okay, so this butter knife, after all, does work as it's designed and it's not uh, complete garbage, like I said. So in this one, we have two. We have one that we're gonna keep in the box. So we're gonna attack the fire from two different angles and see if maybe between two of them, it can put out the fire. And if that doesn't work, then these things just suck. I'm gonna try to run away with 20 pound boots. All right, that's one. Oh, come on. Just go. Now we're in a dangerous situation. <laughs> okay, so, so leaving that one in the box did less than nothing, which is what the other one did. Maybe one's warmer than the other? I'm gonna stand here with this thing on for a minute or two. And I'm gonna try to get a gauge of the warmth. And then I'll compare it to the other one. Cause this thing actually feels pretty toasty. The carbonation really adds something extra, especially the ketchup. If you're gonna carbonate any sauce, carbonate your ketchup. I don't, I don't know what it is. There's just, there's just something about it. It's so good. It's so good. This, this whole video was really just an excuse for me to eat dino chicken nuggets. Pretty soon if I keep on this track, Gordon Ramsay is going to be coming to me for suggestions. So our next product is Universal Dust Cleaning Gel. It, it honestly kind of reminds me of, uh, I don't remember what it, just like fart putty? Like whenever we were kids where you could just like, let's see if we can get one. Yeah, it's kind of like what it reminds me of, except for it's not like not quite as good, but it's kind of just like, it's just like snot, essentially, that you're just supposed to like, put it inside of like the, the crevices of your car and it'll pick up dust and dirt. And then you can, whenever it's dirty, you just throw it away and get another one. So we have plenty of dust and dirt to try to pick up. All right, so the place that I want to use this gel is in there. And I guess we could also try to put it in there. Get our snot out of our jar here. It almost reminds me of uh, if anybody's seen that movie, Flubber. Kinda reminds me of that. So let's just, I guess just shove it down in there. <laughs> All right, let's see what we get when we pull it up. Oh wow picked up a lot of dirt and that's actually pretty clean. I mean, granted it was absolutely disgusting, but that picked up quite a bit. Beautiful. That actually might not have been enough. I guess we'll see. All right, now we just slide this onto here. Let's see if we can pull this dent out. All right, apparently not. Looks like, uh, looks like if we look at that, maybe we didn't get quite enough glue in there. Oh, the block's already trying to split. We're already at 430 pounds. Okay, so in the first video, I put it on the, the left side and pretty much body slammed it and it didn't break. So this time I'm just gonna sit down very gently and we'll see if it breaks. 
it broke. <laughs> so you can see the egg uh, shattered just by sitting on it gently. That's how, uh, that's how, how much this thing deteriorated in just two months of being sat on. It goes from uh, literally being able to body slam eggs and not breaking to you couldn't even sit on it. Literally now, whenever I sit on it, it feels like, it just feels like sitting on a regular chair. I don't wanna, I wish I had a bigger turntable. I don't wanna knock these things off. Let's try this one first. Where's my, oh. <laughs> there we go, okay. There's my spoon. Nice chili flavor, not amazing, a little bit bland. <clears throat> a little spicy, yeah. It doesn't really have much flavor other than just the, just the chili powder, that's really it. Doesn't seem like they added anything to it besides chili powder and maybe a little bit too much. Let's see what this is. Man, I think that was a little bit too much. This one has more flavor than this one. A little less spicy, still not like great. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, this one's, this one's not that good at all. I don't know, the meat's like chewy. Almost no flavor at all. This one, whatever this one is, this is like bottom of the barrel. Would not eat that at all. So now step two, UV sealant protection. Open UV sealant pouch and pull out wipe. Apply to headlight surface by wiping in one direction similar to applying a coat of paint. One wipe will coat two headlights but use additional sealant wipe if needed. Avoid contact with painted surfaces. Let surface completely dry. Surface will be dry to touch in about three hours. Do not touch surface and avoid contact with water until dry. Similar to a coat of paint makes me think that I'm supposed to just like wipe it, just like wipe it once and then let it dry. Whew. This stinks too. All right, we've got a couple ounces of gasoline. Our electric heater's been running and it's, and it's warmed up. Let's see what happens. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, um, this is not what I expected. I, <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, okay, let's try again. It's, it's still blowing out hot air. So, let's go again. No way. Still blowing out hot air. Okay, so I guess you can literally dump gas straight into this space heater and it won't even catch on fire. All right, I think we know where this is gonna go. So let's just get it over with. Oh. My number one priority was making sure that, that propane tank did not explode. Well, some fireman I am, the fire literally put itself out before I even had a chance to fill the bucket back up. So don't call me if you have a fire. All right, so now I think it's time for the kerosene heater. I think we can all pretty much agree that the same thing is gonna happen that it did with the propane heater, but I have two buckets of water now, so I'm double prepared, so we should be in good shape. Let's go. That was so much bigger than I expected. All right, so that's what happens whenever you dump gasoline on space heaters. Let's see if this stuff works. So I guess I'm gonna be the hurricane. All right, here we go. Really? I had a suspicion when I bought these that these windows weren't glass and they were plastic. They might be glass, let's see. Okay, they are glass. And uh, that <laughs> didn't stop anything from happening. So, we should be fine. And of course, as you just saw in the truck, it uh, is still putting out the same exact air temperature. Now I can tell you just, I, I turned this on just a couple minutes ago on medium. I set this vent just to, to blow on me. 
And what I can tell you is that sitting inside like a, even this hot tent, even though this is blowing out like 50, whatever it was, 50 degree air, it's not, um, it's not very impressive. It doesn't feel that great. It doesn't feel as good as you would think it would feel. It's, it's definitely better than a, just a regular fan blowing on you. You know, it's not $400 good, whatever it is, 350 or whatever, however much it costs, depending on what package you get or whatever. It's, it's not, it's not that much good. I'm gonna hit it right here in the middle where this support is. Okay, that's not exactly what I expected. I didn't think it was gonna de destroy it with like one hit. Just because I know that you guys will absolutely riot if I don't do this, because this is one of the number one things you guys wanted in the comments. So, let's see if it makes it through. All right, three, two, one. Oh. <laughs> Not only did it make it through, it also went um, <laughs> from, from here, what is that, six inches into the target. So, I mean, technically, if you were holding this and you got hit with an arrow, I mean, technically you'd be all right as long as the arrow doesn't hit where your hand is. That's pretty much what I expected. I didn't expect this stuff to really stop a crossbow. A very good temperature that would be a represented a representation of an outside summer day. A, a situation where you would be using something like this. Because if it was if it was cold, I mean you're probably not gonna be looking for something to keep your drink cold if it's already cold outside. I would like to know when where they're getting this 10 hours from. Maybe 10 hours like in a fridge or something. Within five hours everything's everything's got up to 70 degrees. I made a smiley face on the concrete with spray paint. We're gonna go uh, magic eraser first. Let's see if we can erase it. Okay, there's no. Wait a minute. I just said there was no chance, but I think there is a chance. No way. Are you serious? It removes spray paint off of concrete? No way. If there, if there was one test that I thought there was absolutely no way on this earth this is gonna, that, that it was going to work, it was going to be this one. I, I'm genuinely speechless. So, I got, <laughs> I got my nails done. Now we're going to see if it helps me open these cans. So I have a can of soup and a, a can of twist up. Let's say I wanted to open this can of soup. I definitely, I can't do it. If I wanted to try to like get into this, I would have to get like a, a butter knife or like a screwdriver or something because I can't, there's no way. I think this is actually gonna be pretty easy. Oh, hold on. Gotta hold the can weird. Oh, look at that. And not a single nail was broken. There you go. Crack your egg into it and then you just Shake it up. Ugh. Maybe don't shake it up that hard. Let's make sure it's mixed. Okay, so it's mixed up. And you put it in the microwave for one minute. And then it should be scrambled eggs. All right, and one minute later. That's not what I meant to do. You have, in one minute, you have that. Whatever that is. I mean, it's a, it's a cooked egg. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there's the water. Oh. Oh, I didn't expect it to leak like that. The last time it just kind of leaked onto the table. It didn't spray me. So anyway, it doesn't work. There's a leak, the house is flooding. We gotta fix it. All right. Oh, 
Oh, don't get the camera wet. What are you doing? Come on. There's no, there's no way it's gonna stop. Oh, there it is. Stick the banana in here. And I guess just, oh, oh, okay. Okay. And we have a peanut butter filled banana. Now, what am I supposed to do with all this extra peanut butter? I didn't think this through. I'll just lay down a paper towel. We'll just let it all, just let it all squirt out. Oh, that's not what I expected. It's like a rough night at Taco Bell. Well, some of these stains that are supposed to be like super difficult to remove, I would have thought that that would have been the difference that we would, that we would have seen. The pre-soak wouldn't have got it, but then these things that are supposed to be like, whatever they say, advanced formula and extra powered and all this other stuff could have got out. That I, I'm really impressed. And it, like I said, it really makes it look like these stain removers really don't have much of a purpose since the exact same thing can be achieved with just a pre-soak. I, th I think the message here is don't waste your money. Just do a little pre-soak if you have a stain. Maybe this would actually uh, reflect your body heat very well. Yeah, the longer the longer I lay here, the hotter it gets. I think, I think this really would keep you warm. All right, so I think that works. Oh no! Oh, there it goes. It's, st it's still working though somehow. I don't want it to fall into the to the heater. How is this still working? It's literally melted in half, falling over and collapsing on itself. I can see in here. I can see the raw LED just like melting into the plastic, and it's still working. I need to tilt this thing forward just a little bit so it doesn't melt into the. I'm, I'm still. I'm, I'm shocked. How is this thing still working? The whole thing is like melting in on itself. Pretty much did what I expected the first test to do, and that is pretty much the batteries dying in order from cheapest to most expensive. I kind of figured that the fan test was gonna do that. Obviously we showed that that was absolutely not the case, uh, but for some reason, this test pretty much showed that. The first batteries to die, the Power Max and the Thunderbolt, both of these lasted, and these are approximate times because we don't have exact to the minute times. These were, these lasted three and a half hours. And then next, the Amazon and the AC Delco. These lasted four hours. And then the, we kind of, everything died in order of cheapest to expensive except for the Duracell. The Duracell in both tests has pretty much proven that it's, like it's garbage. It's not, it's just like can't, it doesn't keep up with these other like top brands, especially for the price. So the Duracell died at 4.3 hours, but the Thunderbolt Edge and the Energizer Max both lasted 4.6 hours. So the Duracell quit early and especially at uh, 76 cents per battery, that's a bit of a letdown. And then we have our, our winner over here, the Energizer Lithium. It lasted a total of five and a half hours in the flashlight. All right, here's the stream light. Wow, stream light's not working either. This is, this is not very good because this is the two most expensive ones and they're both not working. Why is there like gas expelling from the flashlight? Maybe they just need to dry out. Okay, anyway, this isn't very good because these are the two most expensive flashlights 
they have O-rings to seal them, and they're not working, but yet that tack light that was like $10 from that video, that one worked. The uh, viral TikTok knife, or the, the viral indestructible TikTok knife, uh, is garbage, just like many of you predicted. And if you grind, your, grind this knife on a rock, you're not going to be able to cut anything. Who would have thought? Get our <laughs> our space gun. I'm, I'm legitimately going to be very, very impressed. This thing does not have like a notch. Very, very loose fit. But I'm going to be very, very impressed if it takes these lug nuts off. Because I have not had these lug nuts off for probably seven or eight years. And I believe when I put them on, I just used an impact and just sent them. Let's tighten. Loosen that. Really? I took that right off of there. Alright, let's go ahead and get it over with. This is the liquid stitch on the leather. Oh yeah, I can already see itself. See it peeling itself apart. Oh, wow. Even worse. Like I said before, obviously leather is not a fabric, and you wouldn't really expect the fabric glue to work on leather, but a part of me expected it to, like, do something more than just, like, just basically hold it together like a piece of gum, almost, and then just, like, peel it right apart. I didn't expect it to be that weak. I'm so happy they're done, and I'm just so glad that I get to try these freeze-dried pickles. They look like garbage, because that's what they are. They don't look a whole lot different than right out of the jar. They're pretty hard. They're like styrofoam. And they still smell horrible. I cannot express to you how excited I am to try these pickles. I'll go for the bigger one because I'm sure that's what you all want.